conditions, we will um, likely modify how the camp will run um, and we'll share and update all the COVID related policy and details with you on our website over the next few months. So let's uh, get to the next slide. Okay. So first, let's uh, talk about what Epson Camp is about. Um, it is a two-week residential camp um, serving our exceptional, um, oops, our exceptional young mathematicians ages uh, 7 to 11 and their families through a very intense and challenging student program and, and very informative parent workshop. And the classes uh, will be led by university faculties and it will cover materials that's not, um, you know, the typical standards uh, math curriculum. And then um, our counselors are all um, undergrad math majors. And the last component of Epsilon Camp is the parent program. Um, so when the um, kids are in their classes, the parents will get together to discuss different aspects of nurturing our mathematically gifted children's um, academic and also social needs. Um, so basically, Epsilon Camp is really not like a typical sleepaway camp. Um, every child who attend the camp must be accompanied by at least one parent or guardian or um, their close uh, family member at the camp. Because our campers really are quite young and they are they will be very academically challenged, so they will need the support of their family. Um, and again, this camp uh, will be held at University of Colorado, um, Colorado Springs this year from July 17th to July 31st. And all the families will stay on campus at the university. And we have a couple um, housing options for you to choose from. Um, Basically, um, the first option is dorm suite, where there'll be four rooms in a suite and has attached bathroom with air, air conditioning. So a family can either take one of these suites and have their own bathroom, or they can also share their suite with another family. So two rooms for themselves and two rooms for the other family and share the bathroom. And the other option would be apartment living. Um, style living and it doesn't have air conditioning. However, it has a kitchen facility that has stove, have fridge and dishwasher. And it will also have four bedroom with a common area and the campers can, you know, have the, um, can have the, choose to have the apartment for their own or they can share. Um, I think this option will be probably very helpful for those campers who have very severe food allergies and, and need very specialized um, and restricted diet other than what the school cafeteria can offer. And this brings us to the meal plan. Um, we ask all the participants to purchase the meal plan. Um, it's really easy for kind of like for logistic reason. And um, the cafeteria accommodate all kinds of diet uh, and diet restriction and needs. And so the food will be clearly labeled as vegetarian, vegan, or gluten-free, nut-free, you know, all kinds of allergen-free. Um, so it, they'll try to, you know, make it very clear. Um, let's see. Um, next, let's get into the admissions criteria. Um, so, I want to first talk about what we're looking for and why we have this admissions process. So one of the most important uh, thing we're looking for and really expecting is that the children who attend uh, Epsilon Camp have exceptional math ability. And that is why we have to institute this admissions process. So we can make sure these children who, um, you know, will have a good time. They will enjoy the camp like this and the camp will be a good fit for them. But we're not just looking for math ability. We, we also you know, are looking for um, kids who are really excited about math. Um, you know, 
we know that it, it's really possible for a child who are really good at math, but not excited to spend two weeks doing math. And so that's what we're looking for. We really want to make sure that the child is very self-motivated because as you'll see in a little bit, um, we really pack a lot of math in a day. And then another quality we're looking for is maturity and stamina of the child, especially for our nine to 11 year old group. Um, their classes will be taught by college professors in lecture style. So the ability to sit and also to listen to a lecture and to take notes are the, the skill we're looking for. And then um, they all, you know, we also want them to have adequate motor skills so they can do all the mathematical um, activities. And then finally, we're looking for children who can work in a group who are good participants in the class and can learn from each other. Um, let's see, the next thing we want to talk about is the application process. So um, you will find uh, more detail in our website. Um, I will put that in the chat. So if you want to look into it later, you can. Um, but basically, um, there will be two kinds of tests. One is readiness assessment, um, which will test on your child's core mathematical uh, uh, competency. And for the 9 to 11 year old group, we do expect that they already have working knowledge of algebra. Um, so once you create the application account, you should be able to download a copy of these tests. And I would suggest that you let them take a stab at it and then see where your child is. Um, we do not expect this kid to get everything right, you know, get perfect score. But we, we do expect that they are familiar with these concepts and can solve a lot of these problems. And they can take as much time as they need or want. Um, but they do need to do all this on their own without the parents' help or teacher's help. And then the exploration problems, um, they're much more open-ended. There usually is no one right or wrong answers. And, you know, and the most important part is to show your child's mathematical thinking and creativity. So, you know, so please let your child know that they shouldn't worry about uh, whether their answer is right or wrong, they should really focus on showing our team um, their thought process because we really want to see how they think about math. Um, the third item we're looking for is IQ or achievement test report. Um, these, uh, we're, we, what we are looking for from these reports are we want to see, learn more about their mathematical abilities. And then uh, we're also asking for a math reference letter from a math teacher from schools or math circle or other math related programs they're in. Um, someone who really know about math and also your child's math ability should write this reference letter. And then there's a brief parent guardian questionnaire. Um, this is where you can tell us more about your kid, you know, their personality and their math journey. And we also ask for non-academic reference. This really helps us understand what your child is like in a group setting and what their personality is like. And it really helps us get to know the child, the whole child. Um, and in terms of deadline, the first round of application, as you can see, it, uh, it's passed, but we're still taking application on a rolling basis. And it usually takes about a couple of weeks for us to process your application. So, you know, when you complete everything, you should expect to hear from us uh, with the decisions uh, in a couple of weeks. And if you have any questions, please just let me know. Uh, you can send me an email. Um, and then and I'll put that in the chat box as well. Um, so let's quickly go through the curriculum of Epsom Camp. The, uh, for the Pythagoras group, our youngest ones, you know, seven and eight year old campers, a few sample topics are like number theories, computational mathematics, geometry, permutations and combinations. Um, we do rotate these classes. So for those kids who attend uh, both when they're seven and year and eight, 
they won't repeat the same curriculum. And also for this group, um, most of these, um, there it's like more hands-on and manipulative. So, you know, um, it, it's less of the lecture style like I was talking about for the older ones. Um, and, you know, and also they'll give them a chance to move around a little bit more too. Let's see, for the next group, these are the uh, Euclid group. That's the, um, our year one curriculum for our nine to 11 year old. Um, regardless of their age, we uh, require these kids to start with Euclid group if they have not attended uh, Epson camp before. The uh, core courses for this group is methods of proof and number theory. Um, all of them have to take these two classes for two weeks. And then other courses uh, we may offer are uh, Euclidean geometry, voting theory. Um, and what we'll, what we'll offer will depend largely on the faculty specialty. So it will vary year by year. And then year two is called Gauss. This is a camper. Uh, this is for campers age like 10 to 11. Everyone in Gauss will already complete Euclid. And uh, some sample topic would be like sets and function, algebraic curves, um, you know, visual group theory. And, you know, all this um, are really faculty dependent as well. But all Gauss uh, campers will have to take sets and functions. That's their core course. Um, Conway is the final year of Epsilon camp, and this is the year they graduate. So um, Conway will, you know, cover a lot of advanced topics like advanced set theory, fractals, topology, etc. Okay, to give you an idea of how a typical day at the camp is organized, um, you know, here is a sample schedule for you. This is from 2019. This is the last year um, that the, the last year we had in-person camp. Um, so in our typical day, our morning will start at seven to have breakfast with your family. And then um, class will start at 8.30 for the whole morning. And in the middle, there'll be like uh, about like a half hour break. So the counselor usually will organize some activities or games for them to take a little break or run around that their energy out. And then at 11.40, um, they're let out for lunch and parents will sign this campers out. And from 1140, if you see um, to 225, there's a long break. And, um, the, you know, what they can do is they can have lunch, they can spend time with their family. Uh, some kids may want to spend time doing the problems they got in the morning, or they can hang out with their friends, they can take a nap or rest or uh, some Kemper actually practice their music instrument during this break too. Um, and then in the afternoon, um, there's another block of classes. And for Euclid, um, Gauss and Conway group, um, the campers, they will have a class and then a little break, and then they'll have an office hour for about an hour. Um, so during this office hour, it's time for the faculty to get together with the kids. And then the kids, you know, when they have problem or questions, when they do their um, homework, they can work with the faculty and the counselors. So yes, so there are homework assigned to our older kids every day. And most of them usually can complete their homework during office hours. Um, the Pythagoras group, our younger ones, they do not have homework. Okay, and after that is dinner time. They, uh, the kids usually eat um, their dinner with their classmates and counselors. Um, and then after dinner, um, they go to math station. Uh, so as you can see, it's a lot of math. Um, and then, oh, I'm not done yet. <laughs> okay. And then, um, so math station, it's, it's kind of like a free play for math. Um, you know, the kids can choose what station they want to go to every day. And some examples are origami room, uh, zone tour room, game room, puzzle room, or quiet room. They, 
that they can just do their own activity. Um, and then from 7.30, uh, 7.40 on, the uh, counselors are done for the day um, and the parents are in charge of the activities at that point. So we usually will have a social committee and they'll put together some uh, different activities for the kids. I'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, Next, let's talk about parent program. So I'm sure you'll agree that, you know, even though our kids may be um, in gifted program or gifted um, school, um, their mass trajectory tend to be very different from their peers. And, and many of them have a synchronized development as well. So it's a pretty isolating experience for the kids and the parents. And it is difficult to find a community where we can safely talk about our children and you know, their challenges that, that we face while raising them. So our, pro, you know, our parent program really is designed to create a community where you know, we can support our parents in, in nurturing not only you know, our kids' mathematical needs, but also their educational, social, emotional needs. So I personally have been keeping in touch with you know, a lot of parents I met at Epsom camp over the years and, and really got a lot of support from them. So it's amazing um, group of parents that you'll meet. And then through this program, um, the parents will have the opportunity to meet the faculty. And so they can hear about what the camp will learn over the course of the two weeks. And we'll also invite um, a variety of speakers, guest speakers. They, they will either present in person or remotely, and they'll cover a variety of topics. So um, one year we have speaker talk about life after Epsilon and they share different summer camps at you know, opportunities. And we have uh, Richard Resick, uh, who is the founder of Art Problem Solving Come one year. And, and he talked about the importance of challenging our children uh, mathematically. And then we also have um, college counselor who spoke about the importance of extracurricular activities. So I, I personally found all, you know, these workshops really incredibly helpful and I have benefited a lot from them. Um, so we also have some round table discussions. Um, just within our parents, it's a great resource and they share their math education resources, academic planning strategies that they found helpful and, you know, and also some school advocacy experience. Sometimes they'll share that. And of course, for those parents who um, need to work, you're more than welcome to work remotely during this time. Um, and the guest program will be recorded and you know, other session will, someone will take notes and they'll be available, you know, make, we'll make those available for those parents who need to work and cannot attend these workshops. And for those families who are bringing their, you know, a sibling, um, they are welcome to join the parent program. And, and I know some parents, they, you know, they want to put their siblings to other summer camp in the area. So we usually will provide some links um, to the summer camp in the Colorado Spring area when time gets closer. Um, Okay, so what's the life like at the camp outside of the regular curriculum? Um, like I was saying earlier, after mass camp, uh, mass station in the evening, there usually is a parent organized activities. You know, um, the social committee, they will plan different activities like board game nights or ice cream social. Um, so, Basically, plenty of there'll be plenty of opportunity for the kids to to get together to play and make friends. Um, and also at the campus itself, they have a really great recreational center. They have a big swimming pool and with lazy river water slides, and there's also rock climbing walls and and you know some exercise equipment for our uh, for adults. Um, so there are a lot of activity to choose from. Um, let's see. 
um, so for the weekend, before I get into that, that's kind of, let's talk about the overall schedule a little bit. So most people will arrive on um, Sunday, July 17th, and the classes will start right uh, on Monday. And then that week, the first week, the Saturday and Sunday, it's completely free. There are no class classes or activities scheduled. Um, however, the camp director um, will usually, uh, they will organize field trips, optional field trips, and for additional fees, you can sign up for these activities. And, um, you know, the example will be like white water rafting, Renaissance fair. So it's really a lot of fun. Or you can also just um, explore Colorado Springs. It's a, it's a great city and there are a lot of options that you can, you can do. Um, and, and then um, following this, uh, the weekend, there will be classes again from Monday through Saturday. And on Saturday evening, there'll be a graduation ceremony. And on final Sunday, everyone leaves first thing in the morning or sometime that day. And then so overall, there will be 11 days of instruction, five days in the first week and six days the following week. And I hope that will give you an idea of the overall schedule. Okay, I really want to quickly cover um, financial aid and Mitra sponsorship. Um, this year, we will offer up to four partial financial aid awards, and the award will range from $500 to $2,500, depending on the adjusted uh, gross income. And there are two um, full financial aid awards. The full financial aid will include uh, full tuition and room and board for the camper and one parent, and the travel costs are not included. And we're very excited that this year we have a new sponsorship. Um, Mr. Mitra, um, he really believed very strongly that camp like Epsilon can make such a meaningful difference in lives of underserved um, and underprivileged children. And he also recognized that the underrepresentation of females among these high achieving math students. And so he really hoped that, you know, the experience from Epsilon Camp will inspire a profoundly gifted girl to develop like lifelong math, love of math, and will really go on to pursue math or some application of math as a career. And thanks to the generosity of the Mitra family, the uh, sponsorship will provide full tuition, room and board, and travel costs for the camper and one parent. Um, so the preference will be given to female applicants, but the sponsorship is open for all eligible admitted campers uh, whose family's AGI is below um, 50,000. Um, to qualify for this, the, for the financial aid, you need to do four things. So first of all, you go on to an admissions um, inquiry form, and then you check the box indicating that you want to be considered for the financial assistance and then fill in your AGI and then complete all the application material. And then by March 15, you email us with your estimated AGI. And by April 20th, you just submit a copy of the, of the tax return showing your AGI. And other than that, there's nothing else you need to do. Um, you know, we, we do um, award these financial aid um, first come first basis, first serve basis. And the applicants of course cannot have received this in the past. And uh, it will only be available to US citizens and, and permanent resident. So now girls at Epsilon. Um, one of Epsilon Camp's mission is really to nurture an interest in math for our profoundly gifted girls. And like I say in the beginning, my own daughter also, you know, attended the Epsilon Camp. And I have to say that, you know, I learned the hard way. And I think that you will agree that sometimes girls really project their passion for math uh, a little bit differently. And many girls really prefer to work in a more collaborative environment. And I think that the value Epsilon Camp brings, you know, one of the great value that it brings is like, it really provides this kind of collaborative um, 
um, environment for the campers. So the girls, they not only you know get to work collaboratively with just the, just girls, but only also boys, um, and they also get the experience to work with our female mathematicians. So you know they really found this kind of experience very inspiring as well, and. So enough with me saying all this, that's, uh, that the girls speak for themselves. And um, we're very lucky that we're able to invite six of our former girl uh, campers to join us today and to share their experience at the camp. So, you know, even if you have a boy who are interested in the camp, I think that you'll still find it interesting to hear from our girls' perspective. Um, so I, I'm going to like first ask them to introduce themselves before we start. So ladies, um, please let everyone know your name, age, which school you go to and, and when you attended uh, Epsom camp. Um, let's see, maybe we'll have Allison to start. Uh, okay, hi, I'm Allison, I'm 14 years old. And I went to Epsilon in 2018 and 2019. Um, and which school do you go to? Kat? Oh, yeah. And I go to proof school in San Francisco. Great. Um, Cassidy? Hi, I'm Cassidy. Um, I'm 16 now and I'm homeschooled. And I went to Epsilon camp from 2015 to 2017. Adele? Hi, I'm Adele. I'm 15. I go to school at Cranbrook Kingswood in Michigan. And I went to Epsilon from, from 2017 to 2018. Uh, Chloe? Hi, I'm Chloe. I'm 14. I went to Epsilon camp from 2016 to 2019. And I'm a dual enrolled student at Davidson Academy. So on the campus of UNI. Great. Uh, Rhea? Uh, hello, I'm Rhea. And I just turned 16 and I went to Athlon from 2017 to 2018. And I go to Thales Academy in North Carolina. Uh, Alexa? Hi everyone, uh, I'm Alexa. Uh, I'm 17, I'm a junior at Phillips Exeter Academy, which is a boarding school in New Hampshire. And I'm excited to talk about my experience. Great, all right. Um, so let's get into it. So first of all, the fact is there are fewer girls than boys at Epsom camp and you know the ratio boy girl ratio is usually hovering around 80 20 or 70 30 depends on the year and so we're really curious about your experience at Epsom camp especially you know because there are fewer girls and what would you tell those girls who are interested in the program what do you you know what to re expect um, Alice, uh, Adele, or, oh, Cassidy. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so actually, um, in my first two years of camp, it was like, it's, it was like a regular year. And in my group, there are actually only like a few other girls compared to like the, like the ratio of girls to boys was, um, pretty small. Um, but, uh, actually it felt pretty normal because I had, I, had, I was friends with the girls. Um, and I did, I did interact. I interacted with the boys. So it was fun um, and I didn't really feel any sort of divide, but um, actually in my last and third year, I was the only girl in my entire group um, and that was Conway. So I was like one of the oldest campers there as well. So like, it's not, it was kind of hard for me to connect with other girls that, were, that weren't in my group also. Um, so there were like five other boys in the group and then it was just me. So it felt kind of weird that year. Like I felt a little bit, not lonely, but it was just a little bit different, you know? Um, even though we had like known each other because I think I was in the same group as, as like most of the other boys for like the past two years. It's just, uh, it's just that like there, it felt different, especially at that age, I think. <laughs> um, actually at like the end of the camp though, Dr. T, Dr. Thomas, he called me like on stage and I don't even remember what he said anymore, but he made like a little speech about me being like the only girl in Conway. And um, that was kind of like my claim to fame, I guess. Uh, I actually just found out today that some of the other girls here remember <laughs> that speech. So, you know, it was just something very memor memorable for me. And like, I had a lot of fun despite like my being the only girl there. Great, okay, uh, Adele? 
Um, hi, everyone. It is good to be talking with all of you right now. I love my time at Epsilon, whether I was disco discovering like a new theorem or we were playing mafia during lunchtime. The environment was very positive, all the teachers, the counselors and the campers. And um, there were more uh, boys than girls at the camp, but all the kids were so kind and I didn't feel that much division of any sort. We played games from soccer to magic, the gathering. We watched movies, we, we ate ice cream and we finished up homework all together. We went on excursion outside of camp. We participated in small talent shows and there weren't any really like girl or boy activities. We were just like, we just had fun endeavors that we experienced together as friends. And even though I was friends with more girls than boys, I remember a few guys that were always alive for party. They were always telling jokes and they generally just had a lot of positive energy. And we didn't even think about the fact that there were more, more boys than girls because we were too caught up in the process of enjoying ourselves. And I'm still in contact with a few friends that I made at Epsilon and I visited them from all over the United States. And I just think that for me, it was a great experience nonetheless. And I made friends, girls and boys. So yeah, that was my experience. Oh, I think you're muted. Okay, I better <laughs> get this right. Okay, so let's move on to the next question. What would you say is the most memorable experience you had at Epsom Camp? Uh, who want to answer first? How about Alexa? Hi, yeah, I can answer this one. Um, so, I mean, as, you, as you've seen, Exeter has a lot of math, but I also want to stress that um, as a little kid, like often some of the most memorable things that I experienced at Epsilon were the social aspects, because at the end of the day, I was what, 10 or 11. Um, so I remember just like going to lunch with my counseling group and, you know, making little concoctions during lunch and having a lot of fun, or uh, Epsilon was the first time that I learned how to play Magic Gathering, which is an obsession of mine. <laughs> and uh, I remember those uh, math stations at the end of the day, I always enjoyed going to origami, uh, the origami room. And I got really interested in origami, which is a passion that I uh, still pursue today. So I guess I just want to emphasize that Epsilon is so special because it not only offers those opportunities for math, but it also offers a social aspect. And having those two things in the same place is really, really special, you know, because even if you might go to a gifted school or go to a special program in your town. Often those two different things are separate. Like you might go to that gifted program and spend out time with people who really like math, but then you don't really get to run around those people. You don't really get to have fun and like be a kid with those people. Or you might be at school and you might not really relate to them on the math level, but you might be able to like go out and play tag with them. So Epsilon was so special because I could do all of that in one place. Like actually, for example, I was really friends with Cassidy when I went there one year and like we could, we could, you know, be delving super deep into a set theory problem that Dr. Thomas taught us, but then also like go out and, I don't know, play Frisbee at the same time. Like these were all very possible things at Epsilon. So that was definitely the most memorable for me. Okay, great, thank you. Um, let's see, Allison. Yeah, okay. So obviously Epsilon is like, it's, it's a camp for kids who like math. Um, but, and like, I do remember some of the math things, some cool math stuff that we did, but to me, the most memorable part of Epsilon was the community. Like, I just remember, like, if you, if I think back to my Epsilon experience, I remember like, you know, doing puzzles and playing games and meeting new people. Like, <laughs> I, I remember singing Hamilton songs with Adele and playing volleyball with Chloe. Um, and like, in general, just kind of being part of this amazing community of people. Like I asked, I asked one of my friends who went to Epsilon with me both years what his most memorable experience was. And he said he remembered playing D&D, &D, um, discovering D&D. &D. Um, so like the math is really cool and definitely re really memorable. But um, to me, the most memorable experience that I had there was, you know, being part of that amazing community. Great. 
Um, let's see. What about Chloe? Okay, so for me, I really enjoyed like the social aspect there and just the fact that, you know, there are so many other kids who also like math because I really struggled to find that as someone who homeschooled since halfway through first grade until fifth grade. And one moment that really stood out to me and it just kind of highlighted how much everyone there seemed to like really love math. So I think it was my third year there and we were all sitting at lunch. And I think the class before that, we were discussing a set of proofs and we were all trying to prove it and solve the problems. And literally everyone brought their homework with them to lunch and we were all eating and discussing it. And all of us were super excited trying to figure out, oh, does this work? Is this how you solve it? And then having so many different ideas. And it was just like so energetic. And it really stuck with me because you could just see that everyone there like really genuinely loved math. And I think it really, you know, helped open my eyes that there was more to math than just necessarily the ways you encounter it in schools and other places. And just generally the sense of community there was really special. That's great. That's what we want. We want you guys to really happy, you know, to really enjoy yourself and be happy at the camp. Um, and that means, you know, our admissions job was you know done right because we found all the all of you guys right um okay so oh Rhea okay so this happened on the last day of camp during my second year and so Dr. T's class Dr. Thomas's class was known for being kind of challenging and every evening we went over like concepts from class in our council group and that one particular day, there was this one question that was like stumping everyone. And there was, we were doing set theory, I'm pretty sure, yeah. And then after going over that concept the previous night, like suddenly, like I understood the question and I raised my hand and answered it. But like, and then like, as soon as I answered it, the, my entire counselor group just like came over and started like high-fiving me and hugging me and stuff. And it basically felt like, everyone was just cheering everyone else on. And I think, yeah, like the other people said, the sense of community is like what I remember the most from that. That's so great. Um, okay, let's move on to the next one. Many of us are really interested in learning about how had uh, Epsilon Camp influenced your math learning experience after the camp and you know what are you planning to do in the future or what kind of math you're into um I think this question a lot of you probably have a lot of you know good stuff to show us to share with us uh Chloe so for me it was really actually I would say life-changing for me because as I mentioned before I had homeschooled and basically especially since for me especially when I was younger I was really asynchronous so I was good at math but not so much the other parts so and just the environment that I grew up in you know skipping wasn't the option and there weren't really kids at the same age and so I just kind of sailed along kind of in my own lonely path but when I came to Epsilon it was a huge difference to what I was expecting expecting I guess and just what I was used to before because it was so much less of the you know you know competitions and tests and everything and just the normal stuff you find in schools and learn and there was just so much more discrete mathematics and really interesting stuff I never would have found otherwise and a bunch of other people my age that I could explore it with and I think that really opened a new door for me and I realized that I was actually you know really interested in so for example number theory or you know sets and proofs and so that really changed how I explored math in my free time especially after the camp. Okay great um who wants to go? Cassidy I saw your hand. Yeah um so like just just like Chloe um it's definitely like a life-changing thing um I feel like Eps going to Epsilon camp was like the driving force in me actually considering a career or like a future in math in the first place. Um, I'm currently planning for like a PhD in math or at least a major in math for an undergraduate study, um, which probably never would have happened without the camp. Um, and after Epsilon, I went to math camp, which is kind of considered like the next one in the series of math camps, um, which I think really helped me 
with uh, math path, sorry, yeah, um, which I think really helped me with my independence um, since it's a sleepaway camp uh, and I was in person when I had went. And I just think that these math camps, like being in your element for two weeks, four weeks, like it really cultivates such a passion and love for math that you can't really get anywhere else. Um, without Epsilon Camp getting me interested in math, I probably would be doing something entirely different, which is pretty strange to think about because like math is like the end goal for me now. All right, okay. Um, by the way, Cassidy is my daughter, so. <laughs> okay, um, so that make me feel like uh, money well spent. <laughs> okay, um, so joke aside, let's see. Uh, let's go with who else want to go? Adele. Okay. Yeah. Um, after my time at the camp, I received a very strong mathematical foundation, obviously, and that gave me a boost in my regular math classes, and it enabled me to proceed with an accelerated program. Uh, and in addition to that, it fueled my love for science as well as math. I love physics, I love doing experiments, and I also love languages and writing. So I decided to place my attention on neurolinguistics, uh, which combines not only the brain and language, but it also studies how the, br um, how the brain works while performing any strenuous mental activity. And learning how the brain works attracted my attention, and this interest grew into learning different cognitive sciences, including neuroscience, uh, psychology, philosophy, and others. And I am still at the beginning of this path, but I believe that my time at Epsilon gave me the strong scientific approach that enabled me to think like a scientist because it taught me that um, STEM is very fun and it can be taken in there. It can have a very creative approach. Great. Um, Raya. Okay. So I would also say that Epsilon was a life-changing experience for me because before Epsilon, I liked math, but it wasn't necessarily one of my main interests. Like I was interested in learning more about it, but honestly, I hadn't had that much exposure to it outside of school. Uh, but like after Epsilon, I felt like I was introduced to this whole new world. And I realized like math could really be like really fun. And one of the major components of this, I think, was more than just the math concepts I learned themselves. I think the collaboration that existed at Epsilon was like really important. And um, I felt like the ways in which we were encouraged to collaborate on all of the problems we worked on at Upsilon was what really stuck with me. And like, I think that was what influenced the development of my love of math in general. And after Upsilon, I've continued to going to math camps every summer. Like I went to Math Path and then for the past two summers, I've gone to this one called HSMC, which is technically supposed to be in Texas, but that was virtual, but anyway. Uh, but yeah, and I'm thinking about like before Epsilon, I hadn't really considered math to be one of my career choices either, but I'm thinking about possibly major double majoring in math and English because I'm also interested in English in college. So yeah, basically I've developed a passion for math and it started with Epsilon. Perfect. Um, as you can see, you know, this is what I was talking about, how like the girls usually, um, you know, sometimes exhibit their love for math, like a little bit differently than boys. Um, and they do have a lot of different, um, you know, uh, different uh, interests. So, so it's, uh, it's definitely uh, interesting to see. Um, and Alexa, Yeah, so I want to say that uh, I guess at the end of the day, math is not the kind of thing that's like a boot camp. Math is not scribbling 10,000 things on a piece of paper necessarily. It requires a lot of creativity and Epsilon Camp really sparks that young. So, I mean, I might have been good at math inside my math class and my parents could have sent me to another sort of boot camp type thing. So I could have accelerated classes, whatever. But the fact that I went to Epsilon Camp really sparked that true curiosity, that creativity. It allowed me to explore problems um, in a creative way, collaborating, doing sort of things like that. Um, 
opening myself up to new challenges. And um, yeah, that, that really gave me the passion um, for math, uh, so much so that I actually decided to continue math. Um, I went to uh, Math Path the following year, um, like many of these other panelists, and uh, I pursued math in school. Um, I did other outside of school math programs, but yeah, it's important to note that Epsilon Camp is not the kind of place where you're just gonna be, get like drilled algebra into your head, you know? Like it's really about exploration and creativity. And I think that's really special. Um, and I think Allison. Yeah, hi. Okay, so obviously everyone's Epsilon experience is unique, but for me, Epsilon was like really life-changing. Um, before Epsilon, I knew I loved math. Like I was, I was really excited about math and interested in math, but um, at Epsilon, I realized like I was, it was my first time being in part of this math community. And I realized um, how amazing it was to be in a community of like-minded people where everyone has, is like interested in kind of the same sort of things. And I realized that's like where I felt like I belonged. Um, so that really changed my life because, um, well, I did Epsilon for two years and I did Math Path for two years after that. And um, it was virtual, but, I still like that math community to me was really special. Um, and I remember like at Epsilon, I remember saying, telling my mom like, oh, I wish that I could do this for like my, I wish I could do this for school. Like I wish I could do this every day for the entire year. Um, and so we actually kind of found out, came up with a way that I could be in that kind of math community every day. So now, um, now I live in San Francisco and I go to the school called Proof School, which is a school for kids who love math. Um, actually, there's three other people at my school that I went to Epsilon with. Um, but yeah, basically, I feel like I look at Epsilon as the catalyst that kind of got me started on this math journey where I realized how amazing the math community was and it led me to be in this amazing school with these amazing people. And I'm really grateful for that I got to go because it changed my life. That's great. Um, okay. Um, so the, there are next three questions that you know are asked by our parents attending today's session. And one parent asked, if you were someone who often felt more mature than your peers, did you find Epsilon Camp to be an opportunity to connect with like-minded girls? And did you connect, uh, did you continue any of those relationships beyond camp? Cassidy. Uh, it's more like I never felt like I fit in uh, outside of Epsilon Camp rather than feeling more mature, I guess. Um, I remember going to a lot of like math or like STEM sort of courses and being like w one of the only girls or the only girl there. Um, and like I mentioned, like my first two years of Epsilon Camp, there were other girls in my group. And uh, it was just like a totally different experience from what I had like experienced before. Um, I kept in touch with like many of the friends that I made for like many years after meeting them. And I distinctly remember crying like so much when my friends aged out before me. So yeah, I feel like that, that has to say something. <laughs> um, I made a lot of connections that I don't think I would have ever made without Epsilon Camp. So yeah. All right, Allison. Yeah, um, so I kind of already talked about how important I found the whole like-minded, like peer thing. But for me at Epsilon, um, well, I was friends with girls and I was friends with boys. I didn't really like, uh, I mean, to me, the whole like boy girl thing wasn't really very like noticeable to me, at least when I was there. I was, you know, I had friends who were girls and I had friends who were boys, but um, yeah, I definitely did connect with some like-minded girls and I did continue those relationships after camp. Like I said, there, like, I, there are a few people um, at my school who also went to Epsilon with me and I am still in touch with some other people too. Like um, there's two girls that <laughs> are actually in the same picture as me 
on the screen um, that I still am in contact with and I like FaceTime them occasionally. So, yeah. All right. Okay. So the next question is, is your mathematical journey apart from the math concepts themselves, what barriers do you find most challenging to overcome? Um, this is an interesting one. Rhea. Okay, so this is kind of like how I mentioned collaboration earlier. So basically, I think finding like-minded people and people also interested in working together and discussing like these types of problems and concepts together is kind of rare, at least in my experience, because like in my regular elementary school, I was working on the same problems and learning the same stuff as my classmates. But like after class ended, I found that not many of them really wanted to keep talking about any of this stuff. Like they just went to recess and started doing other stuff. So, and like no one would really be interested in like actually talking about what we just learned. But at Epsilon, I think like the all of the kids there like really wanted to just keep learning more and all of them were really curious. So I think um, just, I don't know, finding people that are willing to work together with you on like more just in intellectual topics in general. I think that was what I found challenging before, but I found more of the, those types of people at Epsilon. So <laughs> that's great. Uh, Cassidy. Yeah, so um, both of my counselors from MathPath, um, they were both math majors and they were both girls. And they both expressed like at two different points in time, like two, like a year apart, that they had a lot of people asking them whether they'd become like teachers or not. Whereas their male classmates were always asked about like engineering or like finance or whatever, you know. And I feel like, and that really plays into the whole belief about how women are more like nurturing and all of that. So they're more well-suited to teaching jobs. And the thing is, I am planning to become a teacher. Um, like that's what I wanna get the PhD for. Like, and I really love teaching. Um, I really love to teach like college, college students. So since I'm going into a teaching position, it worries me that I'm just becoming like another statistic, like another number, another girl who's becoming like a teacher because we're naturally more well-suited to deal with kids. Um, and it's strange because it's not like I'm teaching like middle school or high school, which are like the fields that are usually expected from women. But even still, I feel like um, since I see all this stuff about women always going into education when they pursue careers in STEM, I feel like I have to prove something, right? Like I have to single-handedly end sexism, you know what I mean? Um, it's just like a personal barrier that I have to get over, like feeling like I'm not doing enough. Um, for the entire gender, I guess, but um, <laughs> going to STEM in of itself and dealing with sexism and being a minority is something that I know is coming. And I kind of, I'm just preparing myself. Okay, you can relax, Cassidy. It's okay. <laughs> okay, uh, Alexa. Yeah, for me, um, I think the most challenging thing was that Epsilon was maybe the first time that I was really, really challenged mathematically. Um, I mean, so far, I think as many of these parents might experience, like your kids are gonna be cruising through elementary school, like just having a fun time. But then when I went to Epsilon camp, I was exposed to, yeah, more interesting concepts, but this is also the first time that I was like struggling. You know, this is the first time I sat down for my homework and was like, oh my God, I have no idea what to do. I need to talk to my teacher. And um, that's what I did. And I think that's really, really important. Um, uh, actually, that's another thing that your parents help you with when you're there. <laughs> another really good thing because otherwise, ah, I'd be like drowning. But having your parents there, like my parents encouraged me to go to the office hour session that you see on the schedule or maybe go to the quiet room is, instead of like the other fun rooms like zone tools or origami, like to, to go sort of like hunker down and, and uh, work on that math. Um, and I'm glad I really did that because it gave me the confidence to talk to my teachers when I needed help. Um, which is a skill that, I mean, I use time and time again, anytime I'm struggling, going into the, going forward, at some point, you're going to have to realize that you're going to face difficulty and to learn how to overcome that and to be able to reach out to these people who really want to help you earlier rather than later is really important. So I'm grateful that Epsilon gave me that opportunity. That's great. 
Um, so let's go over the last question really quick because we are actually uh, coming to the end of our one hour mark. But OK, so the last question is pretty fun. It's um, so someone asked what favorite math um, games and um, or um, resources, learning resources do you use the most? Um, want to go first. Adele? Um, I'll talk about the games mainly that uh, I got from Epsilon. So two board games were Prime Climb and Set. I convinced my parents to buy both of them for me. And when I was at Epsilon, I had a lot of fun playing those with my friends. And I think both games combined uh, math, enthusiasm, luck, and especially set. That was a really fun game that stimulated my brain to find patterns and taught me to think fast under pressure, which are both fun and useful life skills. And uh, Zoom tools, they're uh, geometric construction tools that link math from ancient Greece to quantum physics. And I also, we also got a set for our home and we've made uh, Kepler's Cosmos, DNA models, Plato's solids, and a hyper dodecahedron and more. And I think these uh, games and Zoom tools, they help develop your brain in non-standard and creative ways. And they really create a strong foundation. So these are some resources that I got from Epsilon that I can share with my family and friends. That's great. Um, Allison? Yeah, sure. Okay. So for me, I mostly get my mathematical resources through my school now, but I definitely have um, like games and puzzles, like, like Adele said, like set that I've played over the years. And there are just so many cool math resources out there. Like, for example, maybe you've heard of Wordle, which is like this daily word game that's taking over the world right now. Um, and there's a spinoff game called Primal. That's really cool. Like you can find math resources pretty much anywhere, but um, for learning resources, I definitely recommend AOPS, which I know somebody, someone, other people are going to talk about that too, but AOPS is awesome. They have a lot of great resources like textbooks, videos, classes, forums, um, and so much more. And in programs like AOPS Online, AOPS Academy, and AOPS Lumen, and Beast Academy, which is probably like the most applicable to you guys. Um, Beast Academy is this amazing program with um, comic book based math. Um, for students six through 13, I think. Um, they have like these comic books that, I mean, they were they came out after, like I was too old for them when they came out and I still went back and read them because I just thought they were so cool and they're really engaging. And I mean, I cannot say how awesome AHOPS and Beast Academy is. It's um, really a great program. So yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, Alexa? Yeah, I know Allison already mentioned uh, AOPS or AOPS, but I that was a resource that I was obsessed with during middle school. I mean, they have um, these online classes. So during the school year, if your school doesn't offer a more advanced program, or maybe you don't have a more advanced program in your city, you can use those AOPS um, uh, uh, lessons to really get ahead. I did um, I did the sequence from starting from like algebra one all the way to calculus just in middle school because I was so obsessed with it. I mean, it's great. I think that AOPS is single handedly the most rigorous, the most like standard, like structural in introduction to these foundational topics in math that you can get. Um, they really help you understand like this mathematical way of thinking, um, how to apply your knowledge, not just to like really wrote like simple problems but really like stretch yourself it's great preparation for competition math if you're interested in that um and yeah great um i think chloe you have to yeah so i was also <laughs> really obsessed with AOPS. um and it's really amazing because when i was homeschooling pretty soon i got to the point where it wasn't just like oh we're learning simple topics and i needed way more than that and i also did pretty much from pre-algebra too. I didn't do calculus, but I went all the way up to it. And it's really amazing because they have so many resources on there. They have online classes. And I remember like when I was a kid, um, you try and answer as quickly as possible. And then they post your answer if you're quick enough. So I'd always be racing to get my answer posted. And they have so many different courses. They have really cool videos by the founder, 
and they even have some games on there, I think. And I've noticed that a lot of the kids who went to Epsilon were really into art of problem solving because it's just the way they explain it and all of their challenging problems. It really goes beyond what you'd find, even in my school. So I still like to go back to art of problem solving and go over some of the topics because it's really enjoyable, actually. That's great. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, ladies. And I hope parents that you find what they share with you guys are, you know, like you find them interesting and helpful. And if you have any other specific question for, for them, you know, please type in the chat and, uh, and we'll try to answer them. Um, so we all, we really are going over, but I want to quickly go in over a few questions that people ask. Um, you know, someone asked, is there any chance the camp will be held virtually if COVID situation evolves? Um, for now, we are planning uh, the camp as an in-person camp. So if the COVID situation gets much worse in a few months, we'll make the decision of whether to move the camp online. Um, but you know, so far we are still planning it as an in-person camp. Um, and another person asked, is there an online option? Um, do parents have to be there with age seven girl? Like I say, um, we're planning to have this camp as an in-person camp, so there will not be a hybrid version of the camp. Um, so it will be in person. And, and yes, a parent or guardian will need to be there the whole two week. Uh, and um, one parent asked, I would like to learn more about the workload and stress level of the campers. Um, I would say that it will be very intense and challenging two weeks for these campers. And um, so, you know, um, but I don't think it will be stressful. They were actually likely to have way too much fun. Uh, and uh, but, you know, in terms of work, though, um, for the older kids who are assigned daily homework, most of them can complete their homework during the one hour office hour session. Um, and one person asked, um, how many students um, are in each level? Um, so I would say each class will be no more than 15 kids. Usually it's way less. It's like around 10. And then like Cassidy was saying, you know, for Conway, sometimes they're down to like six kids. So it's a very small classes. Um, and uh, one person asked, is there any special advantage, either financially or admissions for or otherwise for girls? Um, on the admission front, I can tell you there's no special advantages for girls. They still need to meet all the criteria that I was just talking about for all the apply, uh, 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 applicants. And there is no special advantage for financial aid application either because uh, we they're awarded um, first come first base, first serve basis. And the but the new Mitra sponsorship we we have this year they you know we do give preference to a female camper. Um, let's see. I have one question asking. Um, Oh, someone will ask for the, you know, for the former campers, are you in math competition? Do you think Epsilon camp help with competition? Who does competition? You can just talk about it. Do any of you do competition? I did a uh, math league at school a few years ago, and uh, that was more less creative math. Uh, at Epsilon, there's definitely a lot of more again creative but because it was more complex at epsilon it helped me with more uh school like competitions yeah um i did math counts in middle school and then like you know the amc's um various competitions math competitions were never really my thing i wasn't really as into them as some of my like other friends were but um, I feel like uh, the math that you get at Epsilon is kind of, it's not really competition math. It's like more um, advanced math than that and like more involved math than that. But um, if you 
like some of the skills that you develop at Epsilon are definitely useful for math competitions if that's the sort of thing that you're interested in. Okay. Yeah, I just want to say that like the, the topics that you learn at Epsilon Camp are often topics that are introduced to you in college. So, you know, Epsilon really, really goes far and beyond, whereas most, most math competitions are at a middle school or high school level. So, I mean, I'd suggest if you're really only interested in math competitions, get a solid foundation in algebra. That will really help a lot. And math, uh, Epsilon Camp really helps with um, like sort of passion for math and, you know, the drive to go further into math. And I personally, I find that more interesting, but yeah. And especially yeah. the fact that you get to learn from the professors and get to cover all this discrete math, which I still can't find today. I really wish I could go back to Epsilon, but I have applied to the camp that comes after it, also founded by um, Dr. T, so. Great, thank you. Um, I think I'll just answer one more question and then I'll try to answer all your questions individually afterwards. Um, so one person asked, is there a mentorship or tutoring program that is connected to the camp during or after the camp? Um, it, I, don't, I don't think that there's a mentorship or tutoring program that's connected to the camp, but um, you know, um, what you know, the camp is more about is just really expose the campers to all these amazing topics that they don't get to learn at school and also for the parents to to really get you know connection to and so yeah no i don't think so um so let's see i think that's it uh, we really have gone over time um, so, you know, um, thank you very much for attending today, and hopefully I was able to help you understand the admissions process and, and life at Epsilon Camp a little bit, and, and I'm really glad that we were able to have these six amazing girl campers um, to, you know, join us today and share their experiences. I'm very proud of them, and, and I cannot wait to find out what's next for them. Um, and, and, you know, I'm here to help you through the application process. So please feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And you can email me or call me, and here, here is my information on the slide. Um, and I will post the slides and the link of the information session on our website as well, so you can refer back to it if you need to. Um, and I really appreciate your time, and I'm looking forward to see your application and learn more about your children. So thank you very much.